name is John Jepson. I am on the Hartford Symphony Board, uh, founder of the Talk at Mountain Music Festival, along with three other people, including the gentleman sitting next to me, Ken Jacobson. And uh, we want to spend a few minutes with you, telling you about this season, and hope you will be joining us. First, let me start off by introducing our guest, Ken Jacobson, past president of the symphony, also a chair of Talk at Mountain, and you do everything else too, don't you? Well, a little bit of this. Former bit. radio personality for classical releases. <laughs> Next to him is our boss, <laughs> Carrie Hammond. Uh, we have to be very nice to her. Thank you. She is the uh, president and CEO of the Hartford Symphony, has been with us, what, a year, a 15 year months? Yeah. year? And if we don't do what we're supposed to do, we know very quickly we didn't do it. Uh, she's been just a super addition to the symphony. And Jeff Martin, who is uh, brand new to the symphony, he's the director of uh, community engagement and there's a third part, second part of that. What is it? Education. Education. Okay, I knew I forgot that. Education <laughs> scares me. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. In any case, to start off with, we're going to ask uh, Ken to give us a background of how this all arose, where it came from, where it's going, and uh, the support that the town of Simsbury has been so kind to give us. John, uh, thank you. Uh, First of all, I, I want to talk a little bit about the Hartford Symphony Orchestra because it's really a good orchestra and an incredibly good orchestra. How does it get to be such a good orchestra? I mean, people come from out of town, how, a city this size, how, does, how, do, how do we have an orchestra this good? Well, you've got to play year-round to really play well. I mean, it's kind of like a team sport. This will be our 70th anniversary of the Hartford Symphony. For the first 50 years, we didn't do anything in the summer. You know, we just took the summer off, and uh, it's hard on musicians. They're not getting that same uh, income that they need. But it's hard on them technically, artistically. Uh, you've got to keep playing, and, and keeping this orchestra active in the summer is crucial. And for 50 years, we didn't do that. And I'd say for 30 of those 50 years, we talked about having a summer music festival or do, do something during the summer, and it, it didn't work, and we just couldn't find it. Well, in the mid-90s, there, there were a group of people here in, in town that, uh, in Simsbury that decided it would be a nice thing to have a summer music festival of some type. And that message somehow got to members of our board. And we had a board member back in the mid-90s, a guy by the name of Chuck Bleich. He was a dentist, a very an incredibly persistent guy. And he got wind of this, and immediately a dialogue started. And he came <laughs> out and started talking to people. We, she, he talked with uh, Mary Glassman, who was first selectman in the Simsbury, yeah. and she promised us a permanent venue, a permanent site with a shell and everything. Uh, and we got some sponsors, and, and Chuck went around and talked to a lot of businesses. Uh, Fitzgerald's was one of them. Fitzgerald's is still a, a, an important ingredient in, in our source <laughs> of tickets. So uh, all of that happened, and there were discussions, and. That's good, but we still didn't have a venue. So the Hartford Insurance Group was brought into the picture, and they have a, had the big uh, facility here, the campus, and graciously offered us uh, the site on, on their campus. For one year. For, well, originally it was for one year. <laughs> That's right. But it turned out to be three years. Yeah, and neither of us could was, count. And I still remember that first, that very first concert. You looked out from the stage, and there were 5,000 people in a very heavy mist. It was actually a light rain, but it was a very steady rain, and there were just a sea of umbrellas out there. And it was really incredibly impressive because we knew that there was an audience out here. So that kind of thing ignited us, and we were there for three years, and the Hartford ran out of parking space, needed to pave over the area that we were in, and we still didn't have a permanent site. So weren't they, CLP, actually, yeah. weren't they actually uh, busing people in from Avon guess, so we could play on yeah, this yeah, site? <laughs> yeah. So CLNP graciously uh, offered us their site uh, further down the road toward Avon, and we used that site for a couple of years. And finally, uh, in the 
eight, uh, 2001, Anita Miller was Sixth our first year. selectman. Yeah. yeah. And she did a lot of hard work to get the site on Iron Horse Boulevard made available to us. And we were there for a few years, but we all this time we were renting a, a portable shell from the Springfield Symphony Orchestra, which was an adventure to, <laughs> to put together every year. It was a, kind of a dangerous thing. It was a little, anyway, so there we were and still in need of a shell. And uh, Tom Vincent became first selectman eventually, and he engaged an architect to design a shell. We had to get some funding. Uh, Tom Herlihy and Rob Hegney were very uh, effective in getting some very important funding from the state of Connecticut. Uh, we went on a campaign, or the town of Simsbury went on a campaign, and we got a lot of individual donors to make contributions. In fact, there is uh, our present site, there's plaques and uh, engraved bricks uh, acknowledging all those donations. And so uh, here we are, and, and it's, it's going strong. Well, it was fun. Uh, I remember a neighbor of mine, and you know him very well because he was on our first committee, Frank Bevilacqua. Yeah. He's uh, one of these guys that only designed and built 15 nuclear power plants. <laughs> so I gave him the uh, directions, the plans for a shell one time. He said, John, we got to do something about this. I said, what's wrong? He said, the shell's facing... Talk at Mountain, not the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so we changed that quickly, yeah. but it was, uh, we stumbled and we got up and we kept going. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, one thing that's, that's crucial to this whole process is the, are the volunteers, especially at the beginning. Uh, it wasn't too challenging when we were at the beautiful site uh, of the Hartford Insurance Group, but when we went to this cornfield, CLP, it was nothing but a cornfield. <laughs> and, you know, there was nothing that, None of the super the infrastructure and everything, you know, it, it was not even grass. And we went out, we, we had the uh, lot seeded, and wouldn't you know it, there was a drought that spring. And uh, I, I can remember somebody buddy found a, an irrigation truck of some sort and was driving up and down this, this desert-like field spraying water around. But it, it came together, and uh, we eventually had to... Shell set up and all the tents and everything. We had all the parking on site. It was, it was an adventure to be out there. But the volunteers have been so crucial in, in making this work because it, you need an army of people. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, you, you, you've got to have people for parking. Parking is, is a challenge because we have parking. There's a lot of parking, but it's all over Simsbury, so you need guidance to get it all together. We have the... Uh, the ushers, the huge crowd, we have up to 10,000 people. You need ushers to keep everything organized. Otherwise, you have a field of chaos. So we've got a whole, whole staff of, who have become very <laughs> talented ushers. We've got people that, to set up tables and, and chairs and take them down and decorate the tables. I think that's the Simsbury Granby Rotary Club, isn't yeah, it? They've yeah. been doing it for years. And that's a tremendous amount of work. And then the cleanup afterwards, it's a massive amount of cleanup. And the people come out here the, the night after, or the morning after a concert and do all this cleanup. And uh, so we're dependent on these volunteers. They've been crucial to our success. It's a wonderful Ticket takers group. and program yeah. Yeah. deliverers mm -hmm. and a group that's uh, very special yeah. is yeah. members of the National yeah. Ski Patrol. Yeah, that's right. Who basically are our medical response if we that's have right. any issues. That's right. And if you're interested in becoming a volunteer, just let me give you a website, www. I'll do that again. www.hsovolunteers one word dot org, and we have two important orientation sessions at the site at six o'clock on the 18th and 19th of June. And if you haven't signed up, just come to one of those orientation sessions or go online, and uh, you can go online and register. But we'd love to have you uh, participate. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. We're asking that all uh, volunteers come to one of those sessions, yeah, whether important. you've been volunteering for 20 years, or actually 18 years, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, whether, you've been, uh, whether you're just new and someone said you ought to do this. Yeah. Well, the rules change every year, and there's little changes in the in the site, or the venue that are necessary to keep up with the latest, the latest strategy to putting on these concerts. Super. Thank you very much.
The next person in line is Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Carrie has been with us for just about a year. Uh, she did some part-time stuff with us, and we brought her back and said, you're not getting away. <laughs> so would you be kind enough to uh, tell us uh, from your perspective the value of uh, basically the summer festival and those things that uh, impact on your operations? Well, I think it's, um, we're, we're so fortunate to have a wonderful venue like we have in Simsbury, where the orchestra can continue, to Ken's point, uh, play together for an additional five weeks. And, um, and particularly in a place where it, it allows you to bring together so many different groups of people. It's such a great space to be gathered together intergenerationally as a family or with your alumni association or um, you mentioned the Rotary Clubs that are such a huge help to us. Um, there are just so many great um, groups of people that come together, sit out on the lawn, um, enjoy great music, um, you know, experience it live. Uh, you know, we have uh, $5 tickets for children, so we really make it very family friendly. And it's wonderful. We get thousands of people for every concert. Um, the lawn can hold about 10. Um, we've challenged that, <laughs> particularly for the 4th of July concert, but it's a really wonderful gathering of just uh, so many people that come together. Um, and so one of the things that we really work at um, and did an extra, I think, a, a, a special job of it this year, because we partnered with the town right at the end of last Halkin. And we said, you know, well, what can we do to make sure that we're putting together a program that really addresses what people in Simsbury and, and uh, surrounding towns would, would come and gather for and come listen to? And so we've uh, put together our five series in, in conjunction with the uh, data that we got back from the survey. Um, and, and we're really getting a great response in terms of ticket sales already to it. So it makes, it makes us uh, feel very, very good about the season. We'll lead, traditionally we lead with a, a mostly classical program. And this year it's going to be Mozart in the Moonlight, um, which will feature our principal cellist, Jeff Krieger. Um, as a soloist, which is another thing that we love to do in the symphony. It gives us an opportunity to really highlight the exceptional talent that we have in our musician pool. Uh, but, but Mozart Under the Moonlight will be, um, you know, just sort of wonderful. You'll, you'll recognize all the sort of Mozart, Mozart uh, you, hits, as I call them, greatest hits. You mentioned cellists. Uh, yes. One person I didn't mention was the third chair of this event. And one of our favorite cellists, Carol Oleski, <laughs> has been with That's us true. for years. That's true. <laughs> and so... Uh, it's very helpful to have someone from the orchestra itself, which can give us feedback and we can give them feedback. And uh, besides, it's fun. Well, and it's fun for us, too, because, um, you know, the way the Hartford Symphony works, most of our musicians live right here in the Hartford area. And, um, and they teach in our schools and they play in our churches and synagogues and they're, they're all around town. You run into them in the grocery store. And it's a really wonderful thing, I think, for the fabric of the Hartford Arts a greater Hartford Arts community, that you're living next door to working musicians. Not every community can say that, and that's a, it's that's a really terrific. great strength of ours. Um, so that when you get to hear them play Mozart in a beautiful setting, um, you know, with fireworks afterwards, the first two concerts always have fireworks, which is great. Um, it's Simsbury just a, provides those for the first do. two concerts, do not They do. It? It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a great way to introduce people to a more classical program if, if that's something that's new to them. It's also just a great way to, um, you know, really experience, you know, stretch out on the blanket and look up at the stars and, and listen <laughs> to Mozart. Um, we'll follow that up. Um, most of our concerts are usually Friday nights, but this year because of the timing of the 4th of July holiday, we're going to have our Celebrate America concert, which will be on Wednesday night, uh, July 3rd. And this year we're, we're going to be honoring American heroes, and that will range from everybody in our armed services and all of the different service corps branches um, to uh, really highlighting some of our great American presidents in Lincoln and Kennedy and, and through some of their words and the music that's associated with them. So that's very exciting for us too. And then there'll be, again, another great fireworks display. Yeah. If for some reason it ever rains on the scheduled day of our concerts, whether the first one being uh, June 28th, which is that first Friday night right after schools get out, um, we always have a rain date. Mm. So usually it's if it's a Friday night concert, the rain date will be Saturday. Um, for our July, uh, for Celebrate America on July 3rd, if it does rain, we'll have the concert on the 5th. Mm. On we also Friday have night. a confirm from the First Company Governor's Foot Guard. That's right. The oldest military unit in continuous existence in the country to present the colors to the national anthem and so forth. Right. And Simsbury's VFW and American Legion 
is going to present the flags when we have the service songs. Yeah. And people who serve in a particular service stand up when they hear their song. Someone asked me one time, how come that guy stood up twice? <laughs> because he was in both the different services. <laughs> there you go. It's actually one of those moments that usually brings a tear to my eye when you see all the veterans standing exactly. up and being acknowledged for their, their time in the service. Um, and again, we also bring in, to your point, we bring in a lot of community groups. That's one of the things that we really take a lot of pride um, about when we put together our, our programs is how can we involve community groups and how can we involve um, you know, the talented um, you know, either service members from our community or, or singers. Um, you know, it was part of a choir. We've had uh, different high schools come and sing with us. Uh, this this uh, July 3rd concert will have um, members of the Asylum Hill Congregational Church coming as a guest artist. So again, that's, that's great fun. And so once we've survived all the festivities of the 4th of <laughs> July and, and uh, celebrating America, we'll move on to um, what we're calling Sinatra Under the Stars. And that will take place on July 12th. That's a Friday night. Um, one of the great things you'll discover about the location is that, that, that uh, it really encourages people to get up and dance. And so when putting together the Sinatra program, we were kind of appealing to the uh, feedback we were getting where people like to get on their feet. And um, Rob Zapula and his big band, uh, some of you might be familiar with him, he just does a fantastic job with um, really swinging out this Sinatra music. And so I expect to see a lot of people up on their feet and uh, uh, <laughs> swing dancing out on the lawn or you know on, on the different... Uh, paved areas around around the uh, stage. Um, and then we'll move on to, on Friday, July 19th to the music of John Williams. Um, most of you know him for the, the great music he does for the film scores, whether it's Star Wars or E.T. Um, and so uh, we're very lucky to have one of my favorite guest conductors um, who we usually was working up at the Boston Pops is going to come down and conduct that program since he knows John so well. And um, It'll be, I think, a really particularly great family-friendly uh, program. I think it also happens to be um, one of our favorite Simsbury officials' birthday, who I'm not going to name on television, but we I think there'll be nothing. some. We know nothing. We know nothing, but it'll uh, probably get an extra little uh, celebratory uh, thing going there, too. And then we'll close celebrating another great sort of iconic um, uh, U.S. Uh, 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 rock band um, in the Rolling Stones who are celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. And so we've got a tribute band, Brent Havens, another one of our favorite guest conductors um, is coming in with his team and they'll do a, a tribute concert to the Rolling Stones in their 50th anniversary. Um, they've been on tour um, recently, um, making us all feel young at heart <laughs> as we watch them out uh, dancing around again. I suspect there'll be a lot of people up on their feet for that program as well. But that's, that's kind of the overview of our season. Again, we're getting a great response to it. Um, we hope we'll see a lot of people out on the lawn. And, and uh, it's very easy to get tickets in terms of uh, um, you can go to our website, which is hartfordsymphony.org, call our box office, which is 860-244-2999. Um, also known, oh, the box office is different. This is our this is our current regular season box okay. office. We will also open up on site here um, at at the PAC facility on June 24th. We'll have a box office there on site. Um, you can also buy tickets in Fitzgerald's. You mentioned their important partnership with us for all these years. Mm -hmm. uh, they serve as a ticket outlet. And tickets, again, very affordable. If you get them in advance, they're $20 for the lawn, $5 for kids. We have different um, kinds of tickets. Absolutely, different kinds of tickets. One of the favorite things people do is they buy something we call a grass pass, which um, you can package things up into fives or tens and um, use them for any concert you want. And that uh, makes it really easy. You get to bypass the box office when you get here. Just go see a friendly volunteer usher and make your way onto the field. So um, We assume that all the people that are come to the concerts are friends, but we have a special program for friends. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I think the other thing that I probably didn't talk about as well that makes the site so, um, you talk about friends, the other reason you want to get your tickets in advance, because if you're, you know, we, most people come and picnic, so they're, you've got your coolers and, and all the other food and beverages that you might be bringing with you. So if you have your tickets in advance, that um, makes it a little bit easier to, to uh, pull your wagon onto the field with your mm -hmm. blankets. and everything else. And Super. And I guess we can set single people at tables for concerts also, Karen. Absolutely. The way the, the structure works, I'm going to sort of, let's pretend we're the shell, and there's, there are some tables set up in the first section, and then you have the lawn that goes out and can seat, you know, um, another 9,000 people. <laughs> so, um, you know, we do have tables up front for people that don't want to be 
on lawns, and you can either buy those as a table of eight, or you can buy single tickets to sit at those or tables. Or for the season. Yep. You can subscribe to all five concerts or just buy, buy them for concert by concert. And if you want to guarantee a good seat to get out on the lawn early, you become a friend of the, right. of the, of right. the uh, symphony. But you can find all that information online or by just calling one of our friendly box office Super. representatives. You have a young gentleman sitting next to you. I do. <laughs> compared, well, young lady and gentleman, but he's sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he is involved particularly that we want to talk about today in education. He's a former music teacher. Mm -hmm. And tell us what we're doing. We've been doing it for years, and we keep seeing excellent changes as we upgrade the educational facility. Sure, of course. Well, music has an important role in, in education overall. And, and I know for a fact that the, the town of Simsbury is one that values edu uh, music and the arts and education. And I think that's fantastic. We understand as a symphony uh, that, yes, we are about playing wonderful music, but we can go beyond that by bringing that music to, to students of, of all ages, from the very youngest students to adults as well, because we think there's something to, to learn uh, from the music that we play. At the Talcott Mountain Music Festival, uh, we have an education tent that we feel is, is an important part of keeping the little ones busy while they wait for the music uh, to take place. So during each concert, prior to each concert, uh, we open the tent and we have a variety of games and activities, craft projects that relate to the theme of the concert uh, that the, the children and, and their parents can come and take part in. At each concert, we also have what we call an instrument petting zoo where we put out a collection of orchestral instruments and give the students an opportunity to try their hand. Uh, so maybe they've never held a trombone before or uh, want to feel what it feels like to, to play a violin, and we give them the opportunity to do that. So we think that's just a small way in which we can bring education out to uh, our beautiful site here in Simsbury. That's good. I Notice that the kids just love to try the different instruments. Of course, of course. And they also, what do they do? They run under the parachute that goes up? That's right. There are all sorts of fun games that, uh, you know, the parachute game. Uh, one of our wonderful volunteers brings out uh, one of those giant bubble makers, and, and they just have a really great time. And I think that's, um, I think that's part of the allure for families of the Talcott Mountain Music Festival is that they can bring their younger children. Uh, and that's a little more difficult when you think of a traditional concert hall. Um, yeah. As a young father, I, I know that. Um, you know, but this is a little bit freer space, and that's really welcoming to families. You'll become important. part of the program, chasing your kids uh, Well, <laughs> yes, you, can, you certainly can be, absolutely. You know, you, you mentioned the kids and, and everything, and it's, it's, it, I got exposed to classical music, fortunately, early in life. Mm. Otherwise, I probably... Yeah would never have gotten involved and you know I'm not a professional musician and but I really have a passion for music and Absolutely. my life has been so positively affected uh, of by course. getting involved with music. Sure, ab age. absolutely. I, you know, I really love music. And, Wonderful. And sitting out there, you know, we've invested a lot of effort and money into a, having a great sound system. Mm -hmm. And when you're out there, even far away from the stage, I really would rather experience it here than Tanglewood because in Tanglewood mm -hmm. if you're outside it, it's it's compromised but right. you really can hear it and you hear yeah. a lot of detail. It's beautiful, absolutely. It's an incredibly wonderful experience. Yeah. One thing we uh, have found that is really helpful and fun because you get to know the people is our sponsors, the people on the ground mm -hmm. whether it has been canes in the past or uh, our own concession booth. Mm -hmm. We have all kinds of symphony materials and right. so forth. And I don't know if we still sell umbrellas, but once in a while we need them. <laughs> it doesn't rain at Talcott. No. No. Oh, okay, <laughs> of course. Well, for later. But use. when it does, it's really fun too. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so you see the same people yeah. year after year yeah. after year. I can't wait. The ice cream guy and so forth. Of course. Yeah. Uh, overall, we have a. Uh, program that exists because of a superb staff, uh, a staff that is capable of coming up with programs like this, which gives any particular person 
an opportunity to find something that he or she likes or families like. Mm. Uh, I mentioned the ski patrol before. Uh, we have had lost kids on occasion. Mm. And I'll say uh, two years ago, I think it was, we had three lost kids. One was found in 15 seconds. We have radios for our people. One was found in 45 seconds and one that took three minutes. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, it, it gives you a sense of family that people are around and can give you a hand if you need it. No, no, it's, it's a wonderful location. I mean, it's also very unusual. Um, you know, you mentioned places like Tanglewood or other outdoor venues. It's unusual that you have one that's so central to the area of town. Yeah. And I think that's actually another really great thing about the Simsbury site. Um, you know, we are surrounded by wonderful merchants who, um, you know, whether it's Metro B and some of the other um, uh, local area uh, stores that come in, it's, it's great. Um, you know, we're very, very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. One other thing that we might want to mention is that uh, we do have uh, paid parking for those people who want to park on the site. Mm -hmm. It's run by the town. We sell the... Uh, uh, tickets for that paid parking. Uh, we do have lots of handicapped parking. I can remember when we started putting this together, we had a responsibility with the initial number of people we talked about for seven handicapped parking, parking spaces. I think we have at least 50 or 60 mm -hmm. on site now. Yeah. At least. Yeah. And a lot of people come from uh, nursing homes or the like, and so they bring their buses right in, right to the gate, we have a handicap entry gate, which is convenient for people and uh, volunteers on site to help carry stuff. Mm -hmm. So it makes it much more convenient. Absolutely. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Simsbury Community Television for this opportunity. Uh, you guys have always been supportive, and we are most appreciated or appreciative of your activities right. and telling us what to do and when to do it. And thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Ken, Thanks, John. Kerry, Jeff. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.